Hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining us during the Litham Partners Fall 2022 Investor Conference. My name is Adam Lowensteiner, Vice President of Litham Partners. Our next presentation comes from GSC Systems, ticker symbol of GVP, that is Golf Victor Peter on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Presenting from the company today is Mr. Kyle Loudermilk, President and Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Emmett Pepe, Chief Financial Officer of GSE Systems. Before we begin, for those not familiar, Litham Partners is one of the country's leading investor relations firms. With more than two decades of corporate access experience, we've built one of the industry's most diverse and effective platforms for connecting small cap companies with high quality and focused institutional investors while creating a framework of best practices in all aspects of investor relations. Today's discussion is hopefully yet another example where you can bring value to multiple constituents. We will dive into the presentation in a moment, but one final item, I want to remind everybody that GSE is available for one-on-one -on -one meetings later this week. If you have not already signed up, please send me an email at lowensteiner at lithumpartners.com or visit www.lithumpartners.com forward slash virtual and click the one-on-one -on -one meeting request button. With that said, let me now turn the presentation over to Mr. Kyle Loudermilk, President and Chief Executive Officer of GSE Systems. Kyle, please proceed. All right, thank you, Adam, and uh, thanks everyone for attending our presentation. Um, Emmett and I are delighted to be here. So let me walk through this. GSC Solutions, we're the future of power operations. Uh, before I go through the deck, I just remind you uh, regarding forward-looking statements and non-GAAP financial measures to read through this slide. So GSC, our mission, our mission is to deliver high quality engineering services, technology solutions, and above the shoulder workforce solutions, primarily to the nuclear power industry and adjacencies to support a stable grid, energy security, and decarbonization of the power sector. We can trace our roots back to 1970s and have been a public company since 1995. Emmett and I joined in 2015, really on the heels of a uh, significant acquisition for the company. We joined to turn the company around and diversify our business so that um, we could serve a broader uh, uh, spectrum of solutions and services and technology for our end user market. And so really, when we look at 2020, uh, you know, GSE Solutions really is a very different company than when we started this journey. At a glance, who are we? We're one of the few publicly held independent companies that serves the clean energy sector of nuclear power and adjacent industries. We deliver unique and essential engineering services. And again, white collar above the shoulder workforce solutions uh, for industry. Our solutions help our clients optimize their performance, comply with regulatory requirements, simulate, train, and staff for their business. Uh, GSE supports the future of clean energy production and the decarbonization of the power industry. So these big macro trends, which are gonna be here as a super cycle for many decades to come, really feel we're just at the beginning of this journey. And it's uh, the right company at the right time serving the right sectors. On the right-hand column, you'll see some um, uh, attributes regarding our company for your review. Leadership. I'm Kyle Loudermilk. I've been with the company, as I said, since 2015. My background is an engineer by education, but a business person as I develop my career, really focusing on uh, working with companies to apply technology to solve uh, significant industrial uh, challenges. Uh, Emmett, do you want to introduce yourself really quickly? Uh, yes, so uh, Emmett Pepe, I'm a CPA. I'm the CFO here at GSC. Um, uh, joined uh, Kyle and I cross paths at MicroStrategy. And when Kyle was building out his management team here, he uh, made the call and um, been part of the, the, the reboot, uh, post-COVID reboot 2.0. Um, uh, went to Penn State and uh, held a number of different positions in software and telecommunications. Thanks, Evan. Another member, key member of our leadership team is Bram Nesami, is our chief technology officer. This is actually my third tour of duty with Bram. First at Aspen Tech, when we acquired a business he was at. Uh, at Datatel, where I was, we brought Bram in to help us create new solutions, which led to a terrific growth story at Datatel and a significant exit for us. And uh, very delighted to have Bram here. He's done a great job, and I'll talk about our, our uh, packaging, our IP and licensing it, and the success there. Don Horn heads up our engineering services group. Great man, 25 years of industrial experience uh, serving nuclear, uh, very well connected. And Brian Green heads up our workforce solutions group. Also a great track record of success providing workforce solutions to the power industries. 
So where are we headed? Where we are right now, um, we going into COVID, we're an $80 million business and COVID had a very significant impact on us. And we'll talk a little more about um, the lingering effects of that on industry. Uh, but our growth vision is really comprised of three steps. The first step is to get from our trailing revenues of, of mid fifties uh, million dollars a year in revenue and get to a point of cash flow break even, which is really getting back to the mid sixties. And we really want to achieve that step and are hundred percent focused on getting there over this next year. For the next two to three years, uh, get back, we really are focused on getting back to pre-pandemic levels of revenue, at which point we throw off good cash. And you can see in our history as a public company, look up our filings. You can see at that level in the 80s to mid 80s, uh, we generated uh, significant cash. And um, so step one, cash flow break even. Step two, uh, get to pre-pandemic le revenue levels. And that leads to a path forward, which was our vision prior to the pandemic, which is to get on a track to be a $200 million plus business. And that would uh, involve a combination of organic growth, cross-selling and upselling, as well as inorganic growth, uh, uh, doing so better uh, and, and smarter as we move forward, uh, which would involve M&A. All along, our company is public company. We are open to strategic transformations at any point along our journey. But our job right now is focusing on operations and getting the company uh, back to pre-pandemic levels. So, when we talk about our growth strategy, there are a lot of opportunities for us that we've been focusing on. When we look at our customers, what are they focusing on? They're focusing on optimizing operations. So nuclear power was very quick to respond to the crisis of COVID. It's in the DNA of the nuclear power industry. When a crisis happens, uh, quickly respond. And that's an important uh, behavior of the nuclear power industry for obvious reasons. But as a result, uh, they're also very conservative industry, and they're very slow to come out of a crisis. And we're seeing that in their spend. It's just not back to pre-pandemic levels. So what, what are they focusing on now? And that is op optimizing their existing fleet and operations. So most, most operators are focusing on getting NRC operational licenses extended to 80 years from current 60 years. There's a lot of work, engineering work and investment that is required to do that. Um, GSE is well positioned because uh, our company is uh, custom made really to focus on uh, issues related to lifetime extension for the fleet. Cross sell and, uh, and upsell our solutions into industry. We uh, focused on diversifying our business shortly after we joined, once we got rid of distractions. Uh, that's enabled us to get through this difficult period of time. And now it's time to cross sell and upsell in our customer base. We'll talk more about that later extend more services to support a uh, small modular reactors uh, provider called NewScale, which is going to market. They had a great IPO and they're focused on getting their first plants uh, built. Um, we help industry address challenges like the aging workforce and talent scarcity. And we do that through our workforce solutions. Our second step is really accelerating organic growth to get back to pre-pandemic levels. Uh, we didn't sit idly by uh, through this difficult time. We really got very lean, which I'm going to talk about. But we also created new products that we've licensed to industry with good success. And we've had press releases around our thermal system monitoring solution, our data validation and reconciliation, which really is a great value proposition for industry to get paid for the power, uh, the full amount of power they put onto the grid. Focusing on these solutions is really um, a key element to accelerating organic growth and extending our successful uh, uh, thesis around packaging our intellectual property and licensing it to industry through SaaS or other contemporary means. And then of course, beyond our uh, getting back to pre-pandemic levels, growth will ultimately be accelerated through continued cross-selling and upselling. Uh, and we have identified over hundred companies with a billion plus revenue uh, that presents a roll-up opportunity for us if and as the time arises. We also have opportunities to extend it to adjacent markets, such as other uh, applications in the Department of Energy and Department of Defense, as well as uh, we do have a good track record of serving LNG with our technology, and uh, that's a good opportunity for us moving forward, as well as wind, solar, and green hydrogen. So our roadmap and growth goals, we really spoon feed this for folks who want to model our business. What do we look like as we achieve mid 60s in revenue, as we get to $80 million in revenue and beyond? And this is validated by past performance. 
Um, when we look between step two and three to get to the 2026 plus target, it really, we will have to raise capital to get that incremental EBITDA. And this gives you a sense of what that would look like and how we'd go about it. Emmett, let's uh, take this part. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, yep, you can go to the first slide. Next slide. So what's GSC uh, today look like? Um, we've got um, GSC, we have two, two segments, GSC Engineering and GSC Workforce Solutions. Uh, on our engineering side, it's design, simulation, and performance. Uh, and that uh, we focus on, we have highly experienced team focused on innovative ways to meet our customer needs through a combination of industry leading services and products. Um, the engineering design and implementation services are simulators that enhance design and performance and optimizing plant performance and engineering program applications. On the workforce solutions, which is our training, consulting, and staffing, we really have uh, focus on flexible staffing services, end-to-end -end workforce management programs, knowledge transfer support of an aging workforce that's about to retire, and really uh, specialized nuclear training programs. This slide here breaks down the, the high level that I just talked about. You can uh, read through this of the you know engineering services, plant mods, consulting, decommissioning, all the way through thermal performance and simulation and training. Market opportunities. This is uh, we're really high on this, particularly with uh, you know the 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 wave of the future from a nuclear perspective, um, having a bit of a renaissance. There's 93 uh, power reactors. Our estimation is that between engineering services and staffing could be two billion a year or 20 million per facility. Um, and then uh, another big thing that we're seeing is uh, the growth in LNG facilities. Um, uh, we estimate over 170 of them with our estimation, uh, at least a billion a year uh, opportunity for us to, to, to get some uh, business. Next slide, Kyle. Uh, this is our logo slide. Uh, you know, we over the years and, and today work with the top uh, blue chip companies, uh, utilities, uh, Department of Energy, uh, Department of Defense, so forth. So we're well positioned working with these blue chip companies and that as um, the nuclear industry grows or, or comes back that we'll, we'll be positioned to, to work with them closely. Our business model, this kind of will go to help, help you all uh, see how we make money and, and, and how to model our business. We have the two segments, workforce solutions and engineering services. Within engineering, we have embedded in there our software that we've been focused on uh, since we started to um, grow that business segment. Uh, on the engineering services, that's a, about half of our business with software being a portion of that. Um, the margins on engineering services is 30 to 40 percent. It's our modeling modifications. Typically, they're fixed price. We have a little bit of time and material. And most of the fixed price are percent complete. So as the services performed, we'll recognize revenue. Uh, on the software piece of that, um, high margin, as, as you would expect from software, 80, 90%. Um, there are perpetual licenses. We've done a great effort to move them to SaaS. Um, obviously, we focus on SaaS as our growth. Some will have to be perpetual because they're in the plants uh, and so forth. Obviously, license upon delivery or if it's SaaS over um, the, the agreement. And then on workforce solutions, it's lower margin, high volume, you know, the more people we can deploy and get out there in the staffing world, the better. Uh, time and material, and as we do the work, we bill and collect. Uh, Cross-selling our solutions, right? So this is, uh, you know, our strategic assets, right? We have program support, thermal performance, simulation, turnkey training, uh, staff support, and so forth. You know, we have these big customers here that need those services and we're, we're focused on going into those customers and actually cross-selling and upselling them um, on, on our programs. One example of a customer that we, um, we have a, a GSA agreement in place with um, the programs and performance, and they also use our GSC workforce solutions. We're looking to add more of our engineering solutions for design and simulation and create a more strategic, comprehensive GSA with that customer. And then we'll plan to continue to use the workforce solutions as needed. Sorry, next slide. Um, our software, um, you know, software that we sell is really four different buckets, right? Our dynamic simulation software, that's the software you'll find part of our simulators. 
that historically before we arrived, the company was given that away for free. They built a simulator, you got the software. We've decoupled that. We started charging and uh, having a separate licensing agreement for that software. Our uh, web-based employee training in Vision. Uh, this has uh, been one of our growth, particularly during the pandemic where large customers, particularly in the oil and gas and process um, would you know, add additional licenses to, to train their people online um, through the web. Uh, thermal performance system monitoring is uh, the future. We've had some good wins. Uh, we believe there's high growth in that. And then we also have software for engineering programs that, that we sell. Uh, on that software, uh, just to highlight its growth, you can see the last 12 months, Q2 of a year ago to Q2 of this year, it's 3.3 to 4.8. Total software year over a year was growth from 3.8 to 5.1. Um, it's definitely been a growth engine for us. We're going to continue to focus on it. Um, it's higher margins, and um, and we we're, we're definitely focused as a business on that. All I'll right, turn it back to you, Kyle. I'll take it from here. Nuclear industry outlook. Uh, give folks a broader perspective of what the industry is and uh, where its future may uh, head. So first and foremost, nuclear is a critical part of our world's power mix. Uh, here in the United States, we're no exception. In fact, it's becoming a more critical dimension of our power mix. Currently, it's 20% of our power supply within the United States, and it generates more than half of our carbon-free electricity. These are very key statistics that most people are not aware of. Um, why are we driving to decarbonization? to decarbonize our grid. There are really two major reasons for that. One is uh, to have clean air and a clean environment to manage uh, uh, global climate change. So by generating uh, uh, clean power and clean energy, that's a key step. But additionally, energy security is a very critical component of this. We see this or the absence of this, for instance, in Western Europe in light of the Ukraine invasion, they are facing a massive energy crisis as a result of not developing domestic sources and secure sources of power. And the United States is very fortunate to have a portfolio approach to our power mix, but this will become more critical across Western economies as we move forward. So without nuclear, we simply can't achieve these net zero goals. Nuclear power is here for the long term. It's not going away. In fact, it's going to become a more critical part of our infrastructure. We make up currently about 30% of the world's nuclear energy um, capacity. And uh, other countries, particularly China uh, and, and others, are, are investing heavily into expanding their nuclear generation capacity. Our current infrastructure in the United States uh, as we mentioned, there are 93 reactors, soon to be 95. Uh, the average licensable um, reactors were initially licensed for 40 year operating license. By and large, from throughout the fleet, that's been extended to 60 years. Um, we're in, in process of extending license, license operating licenses to 80 years. And there's already discussion for one plant to be the first 100 year operating license um, that's awarded. So to do this, uh, this, why are we doing this? Or effectively, these are critical assets. They generate a massive and very significant part of our power, a majority of our carbon-free power and base load. And therefore, this aging fleet has to have a lifetime extension that requires a lot of capital improvement. Um, it's like changing the wheels in your car as you're driving down the street, changing the engine and transmission. These plants lead the world in the United States for capacity factor um, and uptime and safety. We've also seen a lot of great headline news regarding nuclear power, uh, government support for clean energy. I won't go through these in detail, but it's quite significant across the Inflation Reduction Act, the infrastructure bill of the fall of 2021, uh, including things like a $6 billion nuclear uh, credit program for zero emission credits, much like wind and solar, we're getting federal credits as well as state. While this is the first federal level operating credit for the fleet, uh, many states have, um, have already put in place these credits to keep these, this fleet alive and up and running and extending the lifetime for the long term. Uh, we also look at other funding through 2026 uh, for DOE to implement an advanced reactor development program. 
and uh, other uh, DOE uh, dimensions for the Advanced Reactor Development Program with a demonstration project for the use of up to $3 billion uh, th uh, throughout the upcoming years for advanced reactor demonstrations. So actually building pilot plants, demonstrating their work, learn a lot from that in preparation for eventual building commercial sized uh, plants. So it's all very ex ex exciting. Um, so we're extending the lifetime of the existing fleet. These big reactors, they're gonna get extended um, uh, through capital investment. GSE is uniquely tuned to do very unique things for that fleet. But what we're also seeing is an acceleration of uh, approaching to deploy the first small modular reactors. These are small reactors produced in factories, delivered to a prepared site and installed. And what small modular reactors are, which provides great value to operators is they're inherently safe, they're walk away safe. They, additionally, because they can build, be built modularly, it lowers the initial capital investment and time required to get your first power source online. And that could be scaled over time versus have a massive build as we've seen with traditional reactors. Um, why is that important for GSE? Well, GSE has partnered with NewScale and has been for over a decade using our simulation technology and engineering services to help NewScale accelerate their licensing uh, requirements and uh, moving forward as they approach uh, what they hope is their uh, initial installations in Romania and in Idaho. Uh, uh, in, in this decade. So net net, every SMR will need simulation technology, engineering services, and other unique solutions uh, that GSE can provide. NewScale is our closest partner, and we hope over time, the more SMRs that are out there, the more that will benefit. And GSE is positioned for a bright future. Uh, we've had a relationship with NewScale, and we walk through that, where we helped develop uh, they used our technology and their efforts to help develop their SMR design, get that licensed by uh, the NRC. It's an integral part of their systems, and that is what the NRC, um, you know, cited and, and New Scale as well uh, by using this technology. Um, this has uh, really been a great accomplishment for New Scale as they uh, go forward and prepare um, for their initial uh, build of a plan. So. Uh, John Hopkins, somebody we know very well. Uh, we had a press release earlier this year about our joint efforts to um, uh, really uh, further the mission of New Scale. And it's very exciting to see all the progress they've made so quickly. Financials. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, so quarterly financials, uh, as you can see, we Q2, or the orders were uh, less than we had hoped for. Um, um, our orders tend to be choppy, you know, uh, particularly uh, since uh, since COVID. Uh, but you know, uh, I will say that uh, as you can see from historical uh, declines, they usually bounce back. I mean, the one thing I will say is our opportunities list um, is strong, stronger than ever. Uh, it's going to be a timing issue on when when orders come in. Um, you do look at our revenue. Our revenue held steady quarter to quarter, um, even with the decline in orders. Uh, some highlights, right? Um, gross margin, right? If you look at our Q2 gross margin, uh, almost 25%, uh, much better than Q1, uh, better than uh, December. Uh, so the strength in our margin, our higher margin products, our software, uh, really uh, uh, showing positive signs there. And software, as mentioned previously, uh, continues to increase uh, in the year 21 at 4.8, and it's going strong in Q2 of 22. Uh, on the balance sheet, you know, at the beginning of this year, we improved our capital structure with uh, a convertible debt. Um, that's that's helped position us. We have strong cash position, uh, total of 6.9, which includes about 1.6 of restricted cash um, that hopefully should free up uh, within the next 12 to 18 months. Um, uh, we, have, um, we have got employee intents, retention credits that we've talked about that we've collected a good portion. We still have about 1.4 million in refunds due. We do expect to receive them this year. Um, so I think balance sheet wise, we, we've got strength uh, going into the, 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 the next four months and uh, we're positioned for, for going into next year. 
Uh, peer group analysis, we, we put this together just to kind of highlight, you know, GSC. Now, we don't have a direct peer because of, you know, we're a public company that kind of runs the gamut of staffing to engineering services. But a lot of these companies um, will have similar fields. They're either engineering companies or staffing companies. Um, and as you can see, based on evaluation, um, we're, we're pretty much trading at a 70% discount to these peer companies. Um, so we believe there's value in GSC. Kyle, you want to wrap it up? Yeah, so in summary, look, our focus is on serving this very unique high barrier to entry market. Uh, there's a lot of great headlines around the business and we have been taking advantage of this downturn uh, as in spend as a result of COVID to really position ourselves with commercial infrastructure to be able to quickly sell into the industry or, and cross sell our full breadth of capabilities. Um, as the industry starts to open up the spending spigots. And this is a pattern that the industry has uh, demonstrated over and over again. So we're really focused on uh, also streamlining our operations, containing costs and maximizing um, our cash flow. So we feel we're positioned for success here. Uh, the things that are in control, we, we, we put a lot of effort into uh, so that the things that are out of control, out of our control, which is uh, when the industry starts to spend and wrap their spending, we're going to be in a very good position for success. We have a specialized platform, favorable industry drivers, just open up the newspapers. It's really top of mind and very critical from a time perspective, given what we're seeing in Western Europe. We have a solid growth strategy, a uh, proven leadership team, which I'm grateful for hanging in there through this pandemic with, with the company. Uh, we have a global blue chip client base. They pay their bills and we have an attractive valuation. So we hope you'll connect with us and follow up uh, through Adam, myself, or others on their, our website. So Adam, I'll hand it back to you. Great. Th thanks, Kyle and Emmett, for the overview. Let's uh, now uh, expand on a, on a few topics here. Um, you mentioned a little bit about you know, the nuclear industry. It's evolved over the years, um, and, and especially during COVID. Um, they, you know, they hunkered down. How, you know, you mentioned a little bit of how that affected your business, but more importantly, can you share insights as to what's the future, you know, look like for, for your customers and, and uh, the nuclear industry? Right. Well, I'll, I'll start with as the industry is coming out of the pandemic, they're looking to do things differently and better than where they were prior to the pandemic. And I think a lot of that is assessing and uh, we spend a lot of time with our customers engaging with them to understand where they're headed and make sure we're aligned to that and have the commercial infrastructure in place so that conducting business with us across our portfolio is easy for our customers. So where's the industry headed? Uh, they, need to, they need to invest to extend the lifetime of these existing plants. Uh, they need, they, uh, with government support and policy, uh, need to build the next generation of plants through SMRs. And um, uh, we see that is going to require also significant engineering services and technology work, uh, as well as the construction. So uh, this is really where the industry is headed as, as we're seeing it today. The company recently issued a press release about the operational extension at Diablo Canyon, California's um, last remaining operating nuclear facility. Can you shed some light um, around that and how instrumental that move is to the industry and GSC? Right. I, I think at a high level, it demonstrates that even in a very uh, uh, forward thinking state like California, there is uh, a recognition that nuclear is absolutely essential to achieve zero carbon goals, as well as to keep the lights on. Uh, for different reasons than Western Europe, California also faces an energy crisis. The hot temperatures, the extended uh, and elevated hot temperatures of this past summer, uh, brownouts were occurring. And there was really discussion of how extensive that would be. Uh, with the drought that's lowered water levels at key energy production sites, such as the Hoover Dam and others. Uh, so those are no longer as reliable as they once were. So winds may blow, but it's highly variable and the sun only shines during the day. So to get through producing all the power that's required um, for a 24-7 society, nuclear is absolutely an essential component. And that's, that's what that Diablo Canyon extension is demonstrating. Of course, that's a client of ours. We're going to continue to do work there. That's important for us. Um, but it also, I think, raises the awareness of the importance of nuclear as we move forward. 
Is the commissioning of Southern's new nuclear reactors um, in the coming quarter something that GSE will be, be involved in? What kind of opportunities are there, you know, in the, com the commissioning stage, and what kind of maintenance opportunities are there as well? W when do those kick in? How how quickly after commissioning do some of the maintenance things occur? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll answer the first part, and then uh, Emmett can follow up. Uh, first of all, we've been doing work for Vogel 3 and 4 for over a decade. You know, we're partnered with Westinghouse. They're standardized on our simulation technology for the AP1000s, and so it's exciting uh, to see this come about. And I will say, as a result of that, we've been generating um, you know, good revenue well in advance of the plants going live. Uh, we've also done good engineering services work um, as the plants prepare to go live. Uh, in-service and pre-service inspection and pre-service testing um, are two exciting areas that are involving our engineers today. You know, as we move forward, Emmett, do you want to share some thoughts there? Yeah, look, I think, you know, uh, the, as Kyle mentioned, we, we, we've already done business with those, um, those plants. We'll continue to do business. I think the opportunity, once they go live, is to uh, provide them updates, you know, I mean, with simulator updates um, and do work on uh, even, you know, our thermal performance, right? Get in there and, and plants are up and running. And, and, and so every opportunity we have to cross sell or upsell them, we're going to take advantage of it. So the fact that they're going live or will be going live will further enhance those opportunities. I think this is a very important question. Maybe a few minutes, few minutes for for some some, some more questions here. But um, everyone's you know asking and discussing about slowdown recession talk. Um, maybe discuss a little bit you know how that affects or you know GSE and how rese recession resistant is is the business. I, I would assume you know got to keep the lights on and, and that kind of thing. So any color around you know what investors can expect during a, a slowdown recession for GSE. Yeah, well, first we say we don't predict the future or give forecasts, so I'll, I'll couch any statement with that again. Uh, but specifically, when you look at the industry we serve, what do they provide? An essential service of electrical power to society. And uh, uh, while society has gotten leaner in how and more efficient in how we consume that power, nevertheless, we consume more and more power every day. So despite the economic buffeting that may happen moving forward, just as it has in the past, more things are getting connected and plugged in. Most notably, look at automobiles. Uh, you know, by 2035, there are going to be no gas, new gas powered automobiles in California. And where's that power going to come from? It's going to come from large electrical generation stations. So in some ways, uh, the industries that we served are somewhat independent, if not counter cyclical, particularly with nuclear. Um, What's dependent for nuclear uh, to, uh, to be a, a steady operating is a steady environment from a policy perspective, and um, you, you know, when, and and have and be free of significant disruptive crises. So what we've seen with COVID is not unlike what we saw with Fukushima, uh, two very significant, and very different um crises the industry really hunkered down and it took years for them to recover their spend rates you're seeing that we're living through that with covid um, so i see that as the major uh, uh issue to work through for industry today feel comfortable spending again knowing how to spend the money required to keep these plants going and that positions us well for that uh emmett yeah, I think the only thing I'd add is um you know I think because of COVID and things changes we've made we've We've been operating, you know, much leaner, more efficiently, um, and and we're we're positioned to weather a, a bit of a, a downturn if if that should come to pass. So I think um, we positioned ourselves to 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 run the organization lean. Um, I think to Kyle's point, you know, energy is energy; it's going to be there no matter what. Um, so I think the 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 business will, will the opportunities will be there, but we also have the ability to run a much leaner um, organization. Just a couple more here and we'll wrap it up. Um, you know, aside from the quarterly press releases, you know, you've been putting out a few new press releases about the industry, but what what metrics can we, can investors um, be focused on to know that you're on the right path, especially the one that you laid out in, in your presentation? Emma, you wanna take that? Yeah, look, I think we, we're gonna take the opportunities to, to, to issue releases when, um, you know, the need arises, right? If we have a, a big win, uh, 
something uh, noteworthy within the industry, such as like the Diablo Canyon uh, release. Um, so I think the expectation that investors should see is that if there's news uh, that's worthy, we'll, 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 we'll announce it. Um, we want to make sure the industry is promoted and GSC is promoted and we, we tout wins, um, whether they're financial wins or industry wins. Great. Any, anything else you want to add or say before we end the discussion? No, just that, uh, you know, again, I'd like to thank folks for uh, paying attention and devoting the time to look through this presentation and discussion. Uh, we do feel we're, again, the right company at the right time with the right people for a very exciting uh, path forward for a very unique and high barrier to entry business. So, um, you know, we look forward to, to stepping up to that challenge. Great. Thank you, Kyle and Emmett. Really appreciate your time today. To anyone Thank out there that's not already signed up for a one-on-one, -on -one, again, please send me an email at lowensteiner at lithiumpartners.com or again, visit www.lithiumpartners.com forward slash virtual and click the one-on-one -on -one meeting request button. We hope you all enjoy the conference. Thank you. Have a great day.